Hello, welcome back to our lesson on SQL for data analytics. This is course three week two. And in this video, my focus will be on the fourth module, which talks about sorting in SQL. I believe you've exhausted or you've been able to execute all the queries listed in module three aggregation in sql i remember in the previous video i did i only explained and i ran this particular query this one that has to do with the count of customers for each country and i expected you to run the uh, to calculate the total sales for each invoice uh, i expected you to also find the average track length for each journey and to determine the number of trucks in each al album and the last query you're supposed to run under aggregation in SQL is the calculation of total number of tracks for each artist. Okay, if you have any questions under each of these queries that you're supposed to run for aggregation in SQL, I will expect you to drop your questions in the comment section in the classroom or you can actually chat me up for a one-on-one -on -one session on how to run the queries or how to interpret the results. Now let's look at the fourth module, sorting in SQL, which is my focus in this video. I will expand this material to view the entirety of it. Okay, so what do we mean by sorting? Sorting in SQL refers to the process of arranging the rows of a result set in a specific order based on one or more columns. It allows you to present data in a meaningful and organized way, making it easier to read and analyze the information. In SQL, to sort your output or results, use the clause order by. So order by is a clause that is you that you use in sorting. As I said earlier in the lecture or in the course, that SQL is a very high level language, uh, you know, programming language. From the keywords and the clauses you see, I think you agree with me that yes, it is indeed a very high level programming language. We know the literal meaning of ordering something, that is rearranging those items in either ascending or descending order. The same word is used in SQL to order or rearrange the rows of a result. So the basic syntax of order by clause is as follows. Right, so this is the basic syntax. You begin with the select statement as usual on the select clause. List the columns you want to select from a particular table, which will appear after the clause from. And then you can bring in the order by clause. So you are ordering by the column one. You can order in ascending or descending order. So ASC represents ascending. Uh, while DS represents descending order. It doesn't, necess it doesn't mean that uh, by this query or by this syntax, uh, this syntax is not saying that you have to call both ASC and DESC. So you choose one of these depending on what ordering format you want. You can also order by column two and choose either ascending or descending. So with this syntax, it means that you can order by multiple columns in either ascending or descending order. So uh, this, let's just dive into uh, the examples. I want us to start sorting in SQL using the, exam the examples from Chinook database. The first example I'd like us to look into is how to sort by album titles. We want to sort by album titles in ascending order. So all we need to do is to copy this particular query. I'll copy this entire query from the select to order by clause. Control C to copy. Then I will head over to my DB browser for SQLite. Okay, this was where we left off in the previous video. And this query is on aggregation. So I can easily rename this tab. So I'll create multiple tabs for each practice or each module. This is for aggregation, aggregation in SQL. Let me just call it aggregation. Okay, so the name of this tab is aggregation. I can always come back to it at any time. Now to create a new tab, all I need to do is hit this new button right here. You see this open tab, hit the button, that will create a new tab. And I'll call this tab, right click and click on rename, I'll call it sorting. So I know my sorting 
uh, the certain queries should be stored under this particular tab. Let's paste the queries that was copied. All right, I think I need to also paste the, the comments. Let me just paste, copy this also and add it as a comment so that when I'm looking at my query, I know exactly what was done. So I've pasted this, but I want it to be a comment. So remember how comments are being entered or typed in SQLite. It's just with double dash and you have that line as comments. And take note of how comments, the color coding of or the color uh, face of comments is actually in this kind of, of green. All right, so that is a, that is a comment. So this query, what, what, what are we doing? What are we actually, or what does this query do? What results is it going to output? So um, we are selecting the album ID and the title columns from albums table. Before we run this query, I like to see all the columns that are there in the albums table. So we're going to select, type select all, select asterisk, which stands for select all from albums. Let's select all from albums. Now, remember I said in the previous video that if you have multiple queries in your query, uh, I mean, your querying tab, you, you it's, the, it's the best practice to actually end each query with a semi column. So I'm ending this query. I'll highlight it because there are multiple queries. I don't want to run all of them at once. So you highlight the queries that you want to run and hit this play button to see the output. So as you can see from the album table, we have three columns, album ID, title, and artist. All right, but from what we want to display for the sorting uh, example, we are only interested in displaying the album ID and the title, so leaving out the artist ID. Now we're displaying these two columns from album table, and then we want to order by title in ascending order. All right, now if you take out this ASC, the ordering will still be done. And it will be done in ascending order. So it means by default, it means by default, when you order by a column, that ordering will be done by default in ascending order. So putting it here will also give you the same results. All right. So let's just leave it as ASC. So I'm ordering by the title column in ascending order. So it means that once we run this query, we are expected to see our output in alphabetical order from A to Z. Let's highlight the query and run it by hitting on this button right here. When you click on the execute all query, you see the output displayed below. So this is the first, the first, uh, the first what album title that is shown. That is because of the dots, then followed by the one with numbers. And then we have all the A's, then we go to the B's and, and the C's and the D's. You can see that this sorting, this particular list of of albums are being sorted or ordered in ascending order. If you want to ascend or if you want to arrange this in descending order, the only thing you need to change is this this keyword D E S C. So uh, this is this will convert or change the ordering in descending order. Highlight the queries and click on enter. So here you can see this is now reordered in descending order. So that is how to to, to order or to, to, to arrange your, your outputs in a given order, either in ascending or descending. Let's see the second example. Let's go back to the classroom. The second example here, it says, okay, let's just re uh, read what we're supposed to see here. Now, this, uh, this is a summary of, not a summary actually, it's just a kind of um, interpretation of the results that you are expected to see here. So I've taken my time to write it out clearly that this query will retrieve the album ID and title columns from the albums table and sort the results in ascending alphabetical order based on the title column. It will display the albums in alphabetical order from A to Z and we've seen that practically. Now let's look at the second query that we're supposed to run. Here we want to sort by track duration in descending order. We want to, we're going to select the track ID name and milliseconds. So I'm picking these three columns from the tracks table now and no longer the album table. The first example was based on the album table. The second example now is going to be based on the tracks table. And we are making, displaying our results by, by ordering it. We are ordering the, uh, the output by milliseconds in descending order. Let's just go ahead and copy all of these queries. Copy it and come over to the my to DB browser. 
paste it remember the first line is a comment just put a double dash okay so we're selecting the track id name milliseconds before we do this i always want to see the table i always want to see all the columns that are present in the tracks table so i'm selecting all from tracks selecting all from tracks and when we do that we would run this query so i'm going to end this query by ending the semicolon highlight the two line queries run it and here you would see that we have some about uh, nine rows or thereabouts we are nine columns i mean to say let's count it to be sure track id one two three four five six seven eight nine so there are nine columns and the only column of interest for our second example are the track id the name and milliseconds so when you see just the track id the name column and the milliseconds column and this particular display will be ordered in descending order based on the, the milliseconds so let's just run this query and then see the output when you highlight all hit on the play button to run the query so you can see that this query this table the query has returned the track id name and milliseconds in descending order so this is the highest track uh the longest track in this particular collection followed by this track followed by this track and so on and so forth so that is uh the list of tracks we have and the given arrangement so this is another example on sorting then let's look at the third example we have in the classroom okay here i want to learn how to sort by uh using multiple columns uh sorting you can like i said here we can also sort the database on multiple columns so look let's ins inspect this uh in this case we are picking our tables we are picking uh, two tables and i'm going to introduce another concept called called joins or join although this is not a lesson on join i would like you to just pay attention to the syntax and even if you don't understand it we will talk about join when we get to the lesson on join let's just copy this syntax and then i mean the query and paste it here right here okay uh, i will take my time to quickly explain this query so you understand it and uh you so and that will help you understand the output also now i'm selecting uh two things i'm selecting two 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 things let me bring everything on one line right so i'm going to select i'm trying to select two things so we want to select the name okay i'm selecting the name and the tie two columns so but the name column is from the table called artist while the title column is from the table called albums okay and while doing this i want to get the outputs from these two tables and to help me execute that query uh, very fast i have to join the two tables on the common columns okay let's just explore these two tables the artist id i mean the artist table and the albums table and see confirm that the artist id is common remember what you learned in power bi class that if you are going to join two tables or you want to merge two tables the merging will be done on common columns so that is the same uh, the same idea that uh, that is being applied here let's display all the results all the columns from our artist id then we'll do the same thing for the second table for, i mean for our artist table i mean to say and then we'll also select all from i think albums table from albums table all right so let's also end this first of all i would run this query let's run this query to see the columns so i'm um, selecting all from artist so this is the artist table it has just two columns artist id and name let's display the albums table select this and run the albums table has just three columns album id tie to and artist id so as you can see the artist id is common to both tables it's present here in artist I, artist table as well as uh, in albums table so this join joins means i want to get all the records from this particular table albums and then i mean this table first all the records from the artist table and give me the output from the albums table but as i return those those records Please check what is common between 
the artist ID on both tables. All right, check what is coming to the artist ID on both tables and return. And that re report should be ordered by the name in ascending order and the title also in ascending order. So you can see AR here. This is AR, this is AL. What does it mean? So it means that artist has been given another name, AR, in short. So that uh, since I'm working with two tables now, remember in the previous video, in uh, our lesson on introduction to SQL queries, I said you can query multiple columns from multiple tables, but you have to reference the table. So here is me referencing the table. So I'm calling this, this particular column from the artist table. So it means I'll have to tell SQL, pick this column from this table by calling the name of the table and putting a dot. So I can as well type artist here, I can just type artist here, artist.name, okay, and that will also uh, give me the same result. But because the word artist might you know, have uh, so much letters, I just need something simple and short to help me um, uh, to help me query this fast and to make my query look neater. And that is the reason why we are using what is called alias. So AR here is an alias. So I'm calling uh, the artist table AR. So I'm saying by doing this without putting anything in between, in between the, 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 the table name and the alias I've chosen, without putting whether it's as or something, I'm telling SQL that whenever you see artists, please call it AR. Or whenever you see AR, please know that I'm referring to artists. And whenever you see AL, please know I'm referring to albums. So you can use any variable here. So this is just like a, like a variable in mathematics. You can decide to call this AT. You can decide to call it anything, anything, anything whatsoever. So whatever name I give it here, Whenever I want to call it or re refer to it or reference it, I have to reference that name I've given to the artist. But since the reason for using an alias is for our query to be cleaner and shorter, so why do I use, why do I want to use a longer word just like that's almost equal to the, the name of the table? So instead, I'm just going to stick with what we have used. AR, artist, please call artist AR. Now, AR.name, which means that the name is from the artist table. And I'm also using an, another alias here as artist name. So if I don't put this alias as artist name, what would have been displayed here is just uh, ar.name from our output. And then al is the album style too. I say, please select the name. I want to see the name from the artist table. And I want to see the title from the album table. And while you're displaying these two columns, call them artist name and album name. And uh, since there are two separate tables, I have to use the join clause or join statement to join the artist on the albums. And this journey will be done on the common columns that they have both have, which is the artist ID. And I'm going to be, uh, I mean, sorting the, the output order by, by the name in ascending order and the title in this in, also in ascending order. Let's run this query and then see the output and uh, for better understanding. Okay, great. As you can see, we have the artist name and, and album title. So here, the the output had been sorted in a given order, alphabetical order for a first name, and also alphabetical order for album title. So that will be all for my end. I hope you did enjoy today's lecture. I mean, today's, um, yes, I hope you enjoyed today's lecture. I'll be looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Uh, please, if you have any questions, don't forget to drop your questions in the, the classroom or in the comment section of this video, or you can reach out to me personally to ask your questions. So I would employ you to go ahead and run this last query and read up all these uh, important notice dropped here. Okay, so having said that, before I go, I would teach you how to save this so that I can always come back to your file at any time. To save this, just hit on go to file and click on uh, the one to do it under, under file. Let's save it as a project. So you click on save project. Let us save this as uh, Chinook database or let's save it as uh, what name can we call this? Mm, um, let's call it querying Chinook database or my um, SQL learning. SQL, uh, SQL uh, learning. All right, let me just call it SQL learning. You can decide to call it whatever you want to call it. So this this project will be saved in the in the folder. SQL for data analytics. I'm just going to click on save and this project is saved right there. Okay, so you can simply close this browser and let's say you want to go back to it and continue working from where you stop. 
go over to your Windows button, press your Windows button, and search for DD Browser for uh, SQLite. Click on it to open. Once you are able to open it, uh, it's, co it's coming up. So once it is opened, which is this, it comes in blank again. You have to open project and go search for the project you've just saved, which is this project. You can see it's sqllearning.sqb uh, pro. So that's the project. Hit on open to open the project. And right there, you have your queries. Okay. But before you continue querying, please confirm if your database is connected. That is the database structure. Click here to see. Okay. Yes, I have my database connected. Sometimes when you open up a project, your database will, this part of the database will be empty which means whenever you run a query, you will not even execute a result. So in that situation, you have to go ahead and open the database again to add it here. So that is why I advise for you to not delete the uh, that particular uh, 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 file you've done. Okay. <clears throat> uh, then let's, uh, okay, that is it. That is it. That is it. So, um, all right. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a lot of things about how to sort in this video. All right. I will see you in the next one. Uh, thank you for choosing the Fat Academy. Goodbye.